Hello friends, I want to welcome you to The Daily Inspiration. I'm Pastor Kylie Slimmons, Executive Pastor of the New Birth Church, and on behalf of our Senior Pastor, Dr. Jamal Bryant, we are honored to be connected with you. Today I want to talk about The Repair Shop is open. Will you do me a favor, why don't you share with someone that you are watching, text someone this link, even now, repost it. As I often say, being a witness is as easy as clicking the button. I want to encourage you also to be a part of this virtual moment by responding during the message, why don't you heart? Why don't you write in the comment sections how this is uh, a blessing to you and even ministering to your loved ones. Also, let's stay connected and follow me at, at Kylie Slimmons on all social platforms so we can engage and build community with one another. And lastly, I want you to take copious notes to study at a later time, to stir up your faith and to share with someone who may be in need. Now let's lean in friends in the word of the Lord today. We want to go to 1 Kings chapter number 19, verse 3. The Bible says that Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. And when he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servants there. And while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom brush and sat under it and prayed that he might die. He says, I've had enough, Lord, he said. He says, take my life. I, I am no better than my ancestors. And then he lay down under that bush and fell asleep. And all at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over a hot coal and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and then lay down again. Friends, I've already shared what I wanted to talk about today and I feel it's important to share it again that the repair shop is open. I recently received a phone call from a friend who um, at the time was at the auto repair shop. I asked my friend, what are you doing there? And he expressed since the pandemic, his engine light has been on and his car has been shaking. I simply asked, um, why do you think that your engine light has been on and why do you think your car has been shaken? What has uh, the mechanic said about your vehicle? And he shared, I have an oil leak. And as soon as he said it, I began to think about all the people who were trying to make moves in life with their maintenance light on. And interestingly enough, according to the Auto Care Association, Americans are delaying maintenance at an alarming rate and this is pre the pandemic, that nearly 25 billion with a B have delayed their auto maintenance repair. A survey shows that of 100,000 American households driving more than 170,000 vehicles have revealed that they need repair, but have delayed maintenance even though they need to get it worked on. And the question I must ask in this finding is how many of us are delaying maintenance that we need to remain balanced, agile, vigilant, and sober? Some of us, just like my friend's car, have an oil leakage. Many of us are feeling sad and empty. Some of us are feeling at a loss and some of us have lost interest in things that used to be enjoyable, have had trouble concentrating, thinking, remembering, or even making decisions. It's an oil leak. You have trouble sleeping or you may sleep too much. There's an oil leak. You've been eating too little and you've been overeating an oil leak. You've been frequently crying and you don't even know where the tears are coming from, oil leak. You have found yourself in this season very uniquely feeling irritable or even edgy, an oil leak. Feeling worthless or guilty or feeling hopeless or negative. These are signs of your maintenance light is on and you might have an oil leak. It's amazing to think how we can keep running and how we think we can keep going without having self-maintenance without addressing the leaky spots in our life. Can I ask you a question, friends, real quick? Are there any leaky spots in your life? Because it is important to know that no matter who you are, we all have to accept that we are capable of shutting down if we don't monitor our oil. 
And I began to think of all the people who have been trying to get to point A to point B, hoping that they had enough oil and that they just wouldn't shut down. Hoping that all the work that they're doing, that the oil that they're putting in their job, that that company just won't shut down, furlough them. All the people who are trying to shift into overjob, overdrive, <laughs> and yet still practically feel stuck in park. All of those who are moving forward, but yet deeply are concerned about not having enough in the tank to make it to their destination. Did you know that if the oil runs out in the car, the engine will become too hot? Did you know that if the oil runs out, the vehicle will run less efficiently? Did you know that if the oil runs out and is not changed, that the entire engine will shut down and even need to be replaced? Simply put, you have to monitor your oil, friends. From a Buick to a Bentley, you have to monitor the oil. From the suburbs to the inner city, you have to monitor the oil. From single families to traditional families, you have to monitor the oil. And from interest. CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, friends, we all have to monitor our oil, no matter who you are and no matter where you are in life. Oil in the Bible has great significance and even symbolism. Oil is a picture of the work and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It was in Matthew chapter number 25. You have the parable of the 10 virgins who use their oil, uh-huh, in wait for the bridegroom. Five of those virgins were ready. They already had their oil in their lamps, but the other five procrastinated, trying to get oil in their lamps, but getting it in and trying to get it in too late. And each one of them honestly needed oil because oil in the Bible has great significance and symbolism. In Psalms chapter 89, verse 20, it highlights how David was anointed with oil. You know, some people need oil changes because their vehicle has excessive mileage. And so it is, friends, in the spirit. Some of us have oil, but we're running low on our oil because we have excessive mileage. We don't know when to stop. We don't have a Sabbath. We don't know when to shut off. We don't know how to say no. And it would seem like that we're going more since the pandemic started than even before we walked into it. And one thing I noticed is you don't get rid of a car because of the oil. You don't get rid of the car because the oil is dirty. You don't get rid of the car because the oil is low. You don't get rid of the car because the oil smells or even smokes. What you do is you get an oil change. And some of us are like my friend's vehicle. We need an oil change. We are in need of repair. And can we just stop right now and pause and ask ourselves, do I need repair? I know that I look good, but do I need repair? I know that I have connections and friendships, but do I need repair? Because in 1 Kings chapter 19, starting at verse 3, the prophet Elijah was afraid and ran. I want to share again, he is a prophet, indicating that he is anointed, sharing with us that he has oil on his life. And yet, even though he's anointed, he has oil on his life, the prophet himself, the Bible says, is afraid and is running from Queen Jezebel. I want you to know that Jezebel has a death threat against Elijah only because she cannot handle his uniqueness, his purposeness, and his conviction of what God has called him to do. Can I say this to you? Never let anyone strip you of your purpose, stumble your progress, steal your sanity. Elijah was so discouraged by the threats of Jezebel that he desired to die. Our society is so jaded, our scales of justice so imbalanced, that we are more offended about people who are taking a knee during an anthem than we are about people taking a life. And transparently, this can cause even the strongest of people to feel weak, even the most confident people to feel unsure. And Elijah, friends, the prophet, came to a juniper tree, a broom bush, a broom tree, and intended and inquired of the Lord to die. 
because he didn't know what else to do. And can I just pause and just say for a moment, some of you who I may be talking to are asking yourself right now, I'm doing something, but I don't know if what I'm doing is making a difference. And I feel like maybe just giving up. Oftentimes the place where we are willing to call it quits, friends, is the place where God reminds us of our purpose. The place where we would have given up is actually sometimes the place that God changes our oil. Can I ask you a question? Where are you right now? How are you feeling right now? And some of you are feeling frustrated. Some of you are feeling broken. Some of you are feeling unsure. Some of you are hoping for a brighter day. Some of you are saying, I thought that 2020 was going to be my year. And actually, this is one of the most difficult years I've ever walked into because emotional distress and upheaval can sometimes be brought on by stressful life events such as the loss of a loved one, problems at the job or even at home, the medical illness and not having the medication to pay for it, or even the problem in a relationship. And think it not strange that even positive moments can even be stressful, such as a job promotion, the birth of a child or getting married can cause distress or mood changes because discouragement, friends, and discomfort is a part of life. And if these feelings don't go away, they may be a sign of depression. Do you know deep discouragement that causes one to feel like it can't change is really just depression? And I want you to understand that dealing with depression does not make you a weak Christian or a bad person. You just need to go to the repair shop and get your oil changed. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse number 5, that all at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. I need to tell somebody who's been hurting, who's frustrated, who's looking for answers, who is even fearful. Expect a touch. Expect an angel to come to your house. Even in this moment of God, I don't know what this is. Expect a touch. Expect angels to be with you on your job. Expect angels to go before your children. Expect angels to be around you even when you're dealing with the police. It doesn't matter. Who is after or who is against you? If God is for you, no one can be against you. It was immediately after that moment in 1 Kings chapter 19, friends, verses 6 through 8, that Elijah took 40 days to Mount Horeb to meet with the Lord. And I pray, friends, that within the next 40 days that God ignites a fire in you that you meet with God. I pray that within the next 40 days, you receive a greater grace to do what God has called you to do unapologetically and even unbothered. It was at Horeb that God gives Elijah three assignments. Number one, God tells him and informs him throughout this time that he, he is to anoint Hazael, the king of Syria. That he is a, to anoint Jehu as king of Israel that he is to even anoint Elijah as the prophet to take his place. And simply, there is another generation, friends, who needs your voice, who needs your courage, who needs your grace. But they won't receive what you have to offer them if you die here. These leaders would help turn Israel around from the evil and idolatrous worship and would facilitate the total destruction of the wicked line of Ahab and Jezebel. Friends, can I say something to you? The next generation needs you. I know right now you probably want to pull back. I know right now you probably want to go into neutral. I know right now that you felt like I didn't plan on doing this at this stage of my life. But can I share with you, there's someone who still needs you. And this situation, this desert moment is not a time that God has, has deserved, but this desert moment is a designed moment that God has destined for you, for you to get what you need for him so you can go back out and help the next generation. Hey, friends, someone at your job needs you. Someone in your house needs you. 
someone at your church needs you. Someone at that community center, even through the virtual space, needs you. There's a student who needs you. And right now, I know there's a lot going on, but God has not put this tree on you to kill you. But God has put this tree on you to resurrect within you all that he has purposed you to do. If you don't believe me, ask Jesus. Because the tree that he was put on did not destroy him. But it was designed that he would fulfill the promise that he was to complete in the earth. Friends, can I pray with you today? My prayer is very simple. I pray that you get the repair you need. I pray that you respond to this moment with class integrity and that God unites us. I pray that in this moment that God fixes every leaky spot in your life so that you can live a life more abundantly. That is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, friends, I have a question for you. Have you given your life to Jesus? I don't know where you are in your life. I don't know what you're experiencing. But if you have not given your life to Jesus this day, I want you to do it. Below in the lower thirds, even now, is this area where it says, joinnewbirth.org. Will you do me a favor? Will you join? Will you get a part of the spiritual movement to ignite the fire in you? And for all those who are watching, I want you to do me a favor for those who have been connecting as this moment is blessing you, as you are a disciplined tither, as you are even thinking about how can I support this ministry, I want you to text NB Give to 77977 because that is also how you can make a difference in the next generation. Can I tell you something? Thank you for your oil and thank you for opening your heart to receive this moment and to continue to make a difference for the kingdom of God. I'm Pastor Kylie Slimmons, and this has been your daily inspiration.